All right, guys. So somebody sent this to me in the Discord, and they just said they don't agree with Abba and Preach. Um, I don't really know. Where did it go? They said something along with it. Um, it's somewhere in here, and I'm going to yap until we find it. Oh, they said uh, one of the very few instances I don't see where they're coming from. So I'm going to take a look. It might be nothing. I might not even post it. I might end the segment early. But if I post it, then it means that I did find it interesting enough. Okay. So let's get this party started. He was like, oh, it's called Is She Right? Or Dodging Accountability from Abbott and Preach. I'm never going to be the guy who posted okay, okay. you. He broke up with me because he was like, I'm never going to be the guy who posts you on Instagram or who buys you flowers. Okay. I thought it was stupid. And then It is stupid. So it's good that, I mean, he broke up with her. I mean, good. You shouldn't be with that guy. Now. It sounds like he was just playing you <laughs> and you fell for it. He broke up with me. Cause yeah. That was sick. I'm never going to be the Sorry, guy. Sorry, I just want to make sure I realize it was. Or who buys you flowers, which I thought was stupid. And then okay. now I hear that he has a new girlfriend and they're traveling around Europe together and he posts her on Instagram. You refuse. Yep, I know how that feels, man. Like I used to be an F boy. You'd be surprised because I'm a big chunky guy, but I've been, I'm a tall guy. I made okay money when I was younger. And uh, I used to play with messing around with girls. And so I would tell the girls that I'm just looking for something casual. I'm just chilling. And then I'd find a girlfriend. And Because, you know, you're really just trying to mess around with her. And you're not really trying to get too serious. And then you find somebody you actually like. And it's it's sad. It's a sad thing. Oh, oh yeah, guys. If there's any moment in this video that resonates with you, comment down, time stamp down below. Sorry I didn't add that. You guys are yelling at me in the chat. Ever post me. Now, a year later, he can date someone and, like, happily be posting her. Even though oh, I, I mean, it's a year later. Maybe he also matured. But, yeah, it sounds like he's a fuckboy. I don't even want him anymore. It's, like, the principle of things that makes me salty. And it's just, like, annoying. That's understandable. I don't know why we normalize everybody, you know, using TikTok as therapy, but, you know. I mean, because, like, people or society, they'll say, like, oh, it's because they don't like you enough. And I just never... Yeah, they don't like you enough. Um, they're immature. Sure. Okay. I felt like that was like an adequate explanation. And it's like this... It is. I mean, like, that's... It's unfortunate for her that she... She's taking it personally, which is understandable, right? We get it. But that is what it is. He didn't really like you. He was just trying to use you for doing it. And that's life, and that's just an unfortunate part of life sometimes, sister. You know, brother? <clears throat> I'm going to call her brother. We call everybody brother, okay? The same thing with... It's like, where he was like, well, I just didn't like you enough. That's same thing with what? Explanation. And it's like the same thing with... It's like, I don't know what that is. Where he was like, well, I just didn't like you enough. That's why I treated you so poorly in the end. It's just this stupid... Yeah, he was probably... He, he probably was trying to push you to break up with him, and then you didn't do it. So he um, broke up with you. I've been there too. Like it's a it's a it's a weak way to go. But when you want to break up with the girl instead of break up with her, you treat her poorly. You know, women do it too. But it's like shitty. I, you know, of course we we regret it. We regret those uh, behaviors. So that's part of maturing. Stupid way for these men to not take accountability for being a shitty partner. And it's like they always are like of the idea of like, well, one day I'll meet the right. Yeah, I mean, this is behavior that engages women engage with too. I don't think it's a man only behavior person for the right person i'm suddenly going to become this like very romantic and amazing partner this person is going to be so perfect that they're going to bring out these characteristics in me that i've never had with anybody else uh maybe i mean listen all i could do is talk about my wife you know i i, I don't think i'm a particularly good person but i met my wife and she has she like legitimately changed me as a man to actually be a man i i you know i what i the best version of a man that i've ever been and i still don't like myself but you know what I mean? And so I think uh, probably bad advice. You pro you actually might be able to change men. My wife changed me significantly. When we first dated, I was in an open relationship. I was messing around. I was a degenerate. And it took a, it took a lot of effort from, from her and both of us. But I'm finally, I'm in a spot where I'm like legitimately happy. I'm very much in love. I give all my energy and attention to my wife, um, you know, because if we're not open anymore. Uh, yeah, you know, they happen. It's not a snap decision. It happens over a long period of time with like a lot of work. And, you know. Yeah, so you can. It's not like, oh, let me treat, but, you know, people, men, I would say, are kind of emotionally unintelligent. So for a guy, he'll be like, oh, either she makes me feel good or bad, right? It's not as understood. So, like, if they're just with a girl and fucking around with them just to have sex, they're the, the stringer on, which is not good behavior. Uh, but then once they find somebody that starts making them feel good, they'll start putting in more effort to change, you know? So... I hate flowers, but I'm going to like them so much that I'm going to buy them flowers. I'm going to be inspired by them flowers because I like them. I like them so much yeah. more than I could ever like you. That's what it seems like they're saying, like as if it's. 
Kinda, yeah. It's just sad. My fault. Me getting- It's not your fault, it's just different people. Treated shittily by them is somehow my fault because I wasn't enough. I- And, and to be clear, and I hate to say it, because it sounds like she was dating a shitty guy. Here's my thing. First and foremost, if you're dating a shitty person, you're probably also shitty. I hate to say that. That sounds horrible. But most of these situations, if you're being treated poorly, you're probably crap. You Both of you suck, right? <laughs> shit attracts shit, okay? Um, number one. Number two, if you're with a guy who says he won't post you on Instagram, he won't send you flowers, he won't give you gifts, he won't do this, and you're staying with him, you need to stand up for yourself more and you need to set better, more firm boundaries. If he's not willing to treat you a certain way, especially that you want to be treated, then you shouldn't be with him. And your desire to be with this guy, despite the fact that all the signs are there, um, that he's shit, is hurting you. And it's his fault and it's your fault. It's his fault for being a shitty boyfriend, but it's your fault for letting him treat you like shit. We're not talking about super big situations of horrific abuse where like you can't escape or you're under duress. We're talking about a lot of situations where there's one person that treats the other person better and the other person steamrolls them and rolls over them and you don't do anything to set a boundary because you're afraid they'll leave because they might leave and he probably would have left, but that would have been better because like you deserve to be treated better and ultimately you have to understand you deserve to be treated better and if somebody's treating you like that, you need to not engage with them. I couldn't make them like me enough. I couldn't elicit strong enough feelings from them for them to treat treat me right like i couldn't make them treat me right because i wasn't enough and it pisses me off because logically that is so stupid if i mean logically it doesn't make sense it just sucks emotionally for you which is understands a real you're, you're being a, a pure a person that's a human emotion you are a bully and you're bullying someone you bullying them has nothing to do with the victim you're well, we're not talking about a bully scenario as much, right? We're talking about a relationship scenario that you can directly say, I'm going to, ex I'm going to say bye. You can say bye. I, unless this guy, and she hasn't said anything about physically, you know, abuse or anything. It sounds like you're in a relationship and you're deciding to stay with him for no reason other than you hope he likes you. When it comes to a bully scenario, like that's usually in school where the kid cannot escape the environment, right? So we're talking about two different scenarios. Um, but I will say that if you're getting bullied, again, you should also stick up for yourself. Depending on that, we go tell the teacher. Teacher, he's bullying me, brother. Tell your dad. And if your dad talks to their dad and their and their dad doesn't change the behavior, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. If you have your kid bullies my kid and you don't do anything about it, just saying. Okay, that's normal, by the way. <clears throat> and if anybody came to me about my kid bullying them, we're gonna have a problem with my kid too. Of course. It's our responsibility to guide our kids to be better. You're a bully because you're a shitty person, not because that person is somebody deserving of being bullied. I feel like these men use this hypothetical girl as a hypothetical benchmark to excuse why they treat you so shittily. And That's interesting. There might be a level of truth to that. I've never told a girl I'm not going to do certain things for you because you're not my dream girl or something. I, I just started treating... <laughs> my wife good because she made me feel good and she treated me good and that's the thing i was a shitty person and i was dating shitty people too so we we're all treating each other shitty right i'm i could be toxic right it's like a very it's a lot of different there's a lot of moving parts here um but i've never gone i'm not going to treat that person well because of x y and z you know and i've always been the person that posts people on social media and, and flowers and whatnot unless i wasn't actually <laughs> dating them but um yeah, again, you sounds like you dated a fuckboy. And it's a way for them to not take accountability by just having this hypothetical benchmark that would just be pushed and pushed and pushed back. I feel like if they happen to change and start treating the next person better, it has nothing to do with the other person. It's just because they just... No, it probably does. The other person probably makes them feel good and the stakes are up now. Because when you treat somebody poorly, it usually means you don't care if you lose them or you know they won't lose them because they don't set boundaries. You start to treat people better when you realize that you really have something precious and then that precious thing will leave you, right? So, yeah, it does have something to do with that. Decided, oh, you know, maybe I should be a little bit better and post my girlfriend on Instagram and buy her flowers because that seems like a normal thing most people would do in a relationship without complaint. I just hate being blamed for someone treating me badly. I hate being blamed for it. If I cheat on someone, it has Okay. It has nothing to do with them. They didn't deserve to be cheated on. I just cheated on them because I'm a shitty person. Like, why? Sure. Yeah. For the most part. Uh, yeah, sure. Are these I mean, you can get to like a really complex, long-winded conversation about, you know, sexless marriages that are together for 50 years and stuff. But I'm really not concerned in that. But generally speaking, if you're a cheater, like, you know, it's because you have a problem with yourself 
and your inability to manage your urges and have any self-control. People. Thank you so much for the $10, by the way. Canadian from Big Mac with nothing attached to it. Alpha, Sigma. Very cool. Okay. If someone says, I'm going to sleep with other people, whether you like it or not, and that's going to be the dynamic of our relationship. Uh -huh. And I don't care if it hurts you, I'm still going to do it. And you accept it. <clears throat> Are they shitty for doing that? Yeah. Absolutely. And you're shitty for dealing with it, for sure. Are you also partially accountable for accepting those circumstances? Absolutely. Yeah. They set a firm boundary and you didn't set your own boundary because you didn't want them to leave you. And that's you. You can't. You have to be stronger within yourself. I agree with that 100%. <clears throat> because what she's saying is semi right. Yeah, Just because sure. you tell someone that you're going to abuse them doesn't make you any less of a shitty person for the ever after abusing them. Just people accept the circumstance that you put on them. Don't mean that you're any less shitty of a partner for putting them through it. But you also have accountability in the situation. You weren't... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with this. ...tricked into this, right? You weren't sold a dream or deceived. You were told yeah. what the agreement would be. You knew it would be bad for you, and you accepted it irrespectively. And, and you, you still stayed hoping that he would change, but yeah. And I like to have that conversation, not because I like to put blame on the other person, but if you're the person... No, but I think that we exist in a time where we don't put... We don't talk enough about education of setting your own standards and setting your own boundaries. You know, it's like we teach people to be weak. Absolutely. If you are the, um, uh, I don't want to even say the aggressor, but if you are the, um, we'll say the leader in the situation, which that guy was, and you're engaging with saying these, you shouldn't be dating a person that you're not willing to respect. And you are absolutely at fault. But you have to teach the other person to stick up for themselves. Like, you know, if your daughter comes to you and be like, oh, my boyfriend won't. My boyfriend won't buy me flowers or take me out to dinner or put me up on his Facebook. I'd say then leave him. I'm not going to go sit down and have a conversation with this worthless person. It's not I'm, me convincing him to treat my daughter better. All that does is make him a better person and I'm not interested. So I would say you need to leave him. You need to set better boundaries. You need to escape that situation. Now, if she was like, well, he said he'd hit me, then I'll go. Then I would obviously have to do something about that. But in most of these situations, it's like somebody being treated poorly and then the person just dealing with it. And without under no duress because they like the person and they are willing to do something. And, and these don't even manifest in these really big ways. Like when my wife and I first started dating, she asked me to use a condom and I didn't want to. And so I was like, oh, I really don't want to. It doesn't feel good. And she let me not use the condom. And that gave her a lot of distress. And I didn't realize this until later on. Um, because I'm a man and I have a male's opinion, but it made her feel very uncomfortable. Um, that was like the first time we had sex. She didn't know if I had any STDs or this or that. And the other thing, there's a bunch of different aspects to it. And like, that's one of those things where it's like, you know, I didn't take it off and stealth her or anything. I was just like, oh, it doesn't really feel good. And she's like, okay, because she liked me and she wanted me to sleep with her. So she let me take it off. And it's one of those things where like, I should have been more aware of the way that she felt and why she wanted me to wear a condom because also pregnancy is not as usually as much of an issue for men either we don't we don't uh we don't usually think about it as much as women do i'm just like penis good penis feel good no condom but she's thinking like what about stds um what if we get pregnant what about this what about this what and i should have been more aware of her from an emotional perspective but yeah, i'm a man i'm an emotional idiot back then especially but she should have also said hey no you have to wear this like i'm not going to sleep with you otherwise Right. And so like that's I think the most common dynamic of where people will have these situations of um, allowing some boundaries to be pushed over. And my wife doesn't allow to push over on all these boundaries. But this is like a good instance of something. Right. Of, you know, who's to blame? Both parties. <clears throat> right. Person who's getting dealt the shitty hand. I like the idea that you have agency. Yeah. I like the idea that the people who are vulnerable or who are making bad decisions can start to change themselves so that they can get better outcomes. I like that. It's poker. For sure. Well, I don't know about the poker thing, but yeah, for sure. You can be dealt a shitty hand. You can fold. If you having a shitty hand and then you bet all the The only thing I would say here is that they should just make sure to, to, to qualify people who are in legitimately abusive scenarios where they can't escape them and that the rest is real. But outside that, I agree with everything. <clears throat> and then you end up... Is that an example of emotional ignorance? 100%. Because I wasn't understanding where my wife was coming from, where she, that where she was coming from when we first started dating. That was me being emotionally unintelligent. Losing, 
You could have folded. There you yeah. go. I don't play enough poker to know that analogy, but it sounded like it made sense. <laughs> Those who know know. Maybe I'm the problem. I'm going to include this in my response. Maybe I'm the problem. You because, are. yes, because <laughs> I gave up on myself a long time ago. Okay. What I mean by that. Is that a don't, don't cringe, Abba. I want to hear this, okay? Shut up, pussy. I'm just kidding. Knowledge. Shut the fuck up. Thank you for the two dollars from Roomba Rocket. Can you let the the Brom? Oh, Brom Lay video today. Oh, can you do the Brom Lay video today, please? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I thought you said, can you please let the video play? Because people say that to me on TikTok all the time, and I just got triggered. I'm sorry for yelling at you. I don't know if I'm gonna have time for that, but I'm sorry. That it is possible. That I am not sorry. the cup of tea of some people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter sure. of fact, cup of tea is not the cup of tea of some people. Sure. Meaning you could be a coffee drinker, sure. The juiciest, ripest, sweetest mango in the world, and motherfuckers are not gonna like mangoes. You could accept that. Yeah. It's not because mango is bad, it's just because they don't like mango. And the thing about this advice that I think is really good, if she ever heard this advice, is in my experience, and this is for me, I don't know how other people would contend with this concept. In my experience, when I can put blame onto myself for a situation, then it is easier for me to understand. Because if something bad happens to me, let's say even another person wronged me, but I'm able to say, okay, I should have saw this coming. I could have done this to change it. I could have done this. That allows me to take control of the situation and go, it, can't ha it won't happen again because I am in control of it. Um, so next time, I won't let this happen. I won't let this person do this thing to me. I won't do that. And I think that if you give yourself that agency to the best of your ability and you really identify ways in which you could have changed and allowed that situation to go better or you can uh, pull a, a silver lining out of the situation, you can pull something out of it that's like, oh, I, could, I learned a life lesson there. You can have a much better um, relationship with your own improvement as a person thank you for the two dollars from Roomba rocket uh it's okay i love you when you yell at me okay i love you too <laughs> okay and it's okay and then they're gonna move on to another per person another thing another fruit and they're gonna be like oh yeah. why are they munching on raspberries like that they didn't munch on me motherfucker i'm mango it's okay yeah i'm not a big mango fan either they like raspberries better i think the viewer <laughs> followed that fruit analogy better than I did. I'm yeah, well, I love fruit. I'm a big fruity guy myself, so I loved it. Lost, but I know they can appreciate you, and that's what matters. <laughs> that's what matters. That's what matters. Because me, I heard raspberry, mangoes, and papaya. There's no way this motherfucker didn't get the analogy. <laughs> and I'm like, sure. Raycon just like I'm not illiterate, okay? I'm not a fucking illiterate, okay? I have dyslexic, all right? their new upgraded model and it's right on time for father's day when i was a kid you know what i got i got a pair of apple airpods for free because i went to this japanese barbecue place in smithtown so i figured i'd you know in case you watch this it was really good too i don't know why they gave it to me for free but it was my birthday so they gave it to me and that was fucking awesome so you know what i mean it's really good stuff it's all you can eat hot pot j barbecue shabu shabu or some bullshit you know, I don't remember how much we paid when we went. But anyway, it's all you can eat, either barbecue or soup. Or you can do both for a little extra. I think it was roughly 30 bucks a person. But I got some good stuff, man. I got... Whew, man, what did I get? I got... Oh, I got like baby octopus and stuff. I got blue crab. Didn't even... Frankly, I didn't eat it because I was... I, I, I don't understand why people like crab. I like it when somebody will uh, uncrab it for me, <clears throat> de-shell it for me, or else it just becomes an annoying gift that's hot and burns my fingers. I used to ask my father the same question. Dad, what do you want for Father's Day? And the answer was always the same. Son, I want peace. Bubble. <laughs> I, you know, it's interesting. I don't even like gifts now. I don't like Christmas gifts. I don't like birthday gifts. I don't really like any gifts for my wife. I feel like as a man, I'm at a point where... Um, I if I want something, I will just get it myself. So don't buy me anything, please. You know what I mean? I, I just prefer that. <laughs> I actually kind of hope that I have a kid on my own birthday <coughs> so I can phase my birthday out of existence. You know, it just will stop existing to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give me a break. Peas can come in different shape and form. It can be 
active noise cancellation. I like Raycon because okay. they have 32 hours of batteries. The 32 hours oh. permits me to use them when I'm on the go, when I'm flying. Also, you guys know the deal. I have to watch the ads for people's videos I watch because that's just the right thing to do. I use it when I when I train. Either when I box or when I go to the gym, they're sweat resistant. You understand? They stay put in place and they don't get damaged by the sweat. And they have all new vibrant colors. So check that out. Go on by Raycon.com slash. Yeah, I prefer just the white ones. I don't really like the colors too much. So I like my white AirPods, you know, the simplicity. I'm not, it's, I'm just, I, I'm not even a, a fan of non colors. Like, you know, black is not a color, just so you know. I really just like the white ones, man. And they come with this really nice hood that you can wear. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're going to save not only 15% on your Raycon purchase, but also the shipping is going to be free. Free is a good price for shipping. Yeah. You're wow. not going to inspire people to do whatever. Why would you stay there? If I don't inspire you to be kind of whatever, and yes, you shouldn't be kind of whatever, whatnot. Maybe it's lack of better words, whatever, whatnot. If my presence with me being here, just me being me, you don't want to do certain things, or we're in a couple, you don't want to do certain things because of whatever you're with, get the fuck out. And if yeah, it's about getting older and setting firm, positive, uh, healthy boundaries. Yeah, for sure. You do it to the next one. It's okay. You cannot take it personal. It is yeah. personal. It's okay. To and it sounds. It looks like she was young. And these. This is like advice that it takes a while to understand it takes a while for people to understand this advice you know by the time you understand it you, you found your partner you know what i mean and a lot of times um you'll find a partner <coughs> who's willing to do these things because like they like you a lot you know what i mean so it's easier to find these easier to do this when you're in a healthy scenario but the funny part is is you need to do it when you're in an unhealthy scenario right that's the that's the funny part and that's the difficult that's the tough part but Take it personal because it is personal. You think it's personal? Absolutely. Oh yes, I've been preaching. Right? It's personal. It is personal. But he's basically saying you weren't good enough for that treatment. Keep it a stack. That's what he's saying. So it's her. She was not good enough for what he really wanted to offer. According or, to him. That, that's the one thing I'd say. Yeah, according to him, it doesn't mean that she. Like again, he sounds like a fuckboy loser. That's like stringing her on. Um, just to be clear, it doesn't make her a bad person. Like I, I don't want to. You know, it's not her fault because they're not compatible. He could have moved on and stopped using her for. Um, and I'm making a presumption, but for sex, which it sounds like what he's probably was doing, right? But he did, which makes him a shitty person. But at least he kept everything 100. Okay, but his standards, right? So it is personal because they were in a, a some kind of relationship together. It it's it's personal from him to her, but it's not like. Because he's she's personally not his type, but it's not like a personal thing where she's like a fundamentally bad person that needs to change because they're not congruent. Like it's not it just sounds like they weren't compatible. Or maybe she had a stanky puss. You know, I don't know. If she had if she if she was stinking it up, okay, if she smelled like dirty eggs, then maybe it is her fault. I don't really know. You know, that's a quite an assumption. Maybe he was a nice guy, but then why would he be tapping that? You know, unless he was only going after that when he was in the mood for rotten eggs. You know what I mean? And I get it. I can understand that as a man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you guys know what I mean. Do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? Sure. She was not good. That's personal. The, uh, there's no way you don't take that personal. It's a very difficult thing not to. I think we can say that from like a idealistic standpoint but it's not possible to not take that person you know you're told this and that and then the next girl all of a sudden he could or she can switch it around and she could do all the stuff she couldn't do for you when you really want to be with somebody and they feeding you lines about like I'm oh i'm not you know. saying she shouldn't take that personal i'm saying <clears throat> the way i take it i'm saying you know what it's your standards and i don't fit your standards if i don't fit the standards to whatever job or whatever i don't think i don't think it as that's how i see it it's maybe it's a way of me to get over that shit i don't i think it as that's all the <coughs> points and i don't fit in there it's just Yo, shut up <laughs> Papa actually doesn't like the smell stop it's your standards and i'm gonna go move on over there but yeah. i understand that she could take it personal definitely i understand that she's salty i'm not saying she. Should. well yeah she definitely took it personally and that's her whole video is complaining about this thing she took it personally you know it sounds like maybe she doesn't have a father not trying to be rude but maybe she doesn't have a father to help guide her uh and her feelings and emotions so take it personal the way i see it, the, the way i move i'm like you know what it's your standards it's you and it's not a man or a woman thing i know she said it's an excuse i'm telling you honey it's a people thing because i've seen enough ladies honey 
Okay, the gay accusations are starting to make sense, all right? Not the first dancing, now you're calling girls honey? People honey? Espe- I mean, come on. Especially since, like, who, what, what's, the, what's the best person to call you honey? An old, fat, black woman. There's no, there's no better feeling than an old, fat, black woman calling you honey. Or baby. Honey, baby. Oh. It's like I have another mother. Except her eyes are not made of buttons. There's no better feeling, brothers. <laughs> String things along or waste times of people or be uncertain or be hung up on the ex that she shouldn't be hung up. I'm telling you, it happens all the time that some ladies are hung up on one person, but they go seek another dude for attention. I just hate... Maybe. I, this might be a thing that happens sometimes. Okay. I hate being <clears throat> blamed for someone treating me badly. I hate being blamed for it. I think there's just. I mean, again, you know, it's the unfortunate reality is that he told you he wasn't going to treat you well and you stayed with him. So you kind of have to take that one for yourself a little bit. Nothing empowering about looking at the group of people who've harmed you and saying they have all the power in that situation. Yeah. That's it's fair. not about victim blaming, it's about the. At least for this channel, like what I want to preach is I want people to. <gasps> oh my God. But who was going to ABBA? Have their own agency in these situations because if you don't, then all you can do is be a perpetual victim and hope that the other side or yeah. the terrible men or women out there are going to change their ways. Yeah, you don't want to be a bystander in your own life. I think is what we're getting at here. Again, like I said, you know, uh, if you can take on as much control or agency over a situation, even when you're wronged. That's a good thing. Hey, I could have done better this. I could have set this boundary. I could have done this. I could have done that. That's a good thing for you to be able to learn to do. Um, you know, at least in my opinion, it's a good thing to be like to be able to try to take some of that accountability over yourself because then you could change it next time. <clears throat> What's the point in a message like that? How is that empowering in any way? So we can do two things. We can say you have some accountability without looking at you like you're a piece of shit or dirt. It sucks that you went that. It hurts. And I can empathize with 100% because not being the one that's chosen when you really want to be with someone only to see them choose someone right after you. How can you not compare yourself to that person? It's yeah, it sucks, man. It sounds like I said. I've never felt that way because I'm an alpha male. You're all losers. But you know, It's very I, difficult. I kind of get numb. <laughs> but all you can do in this is look at it and be like, what can I do better? Yeah. And I'm saying this very candidly. If you truly value yourself, if your self-esteem is in a good place and how you view yourself, you will never accept a man telling you to your face. I'm going to treat you like plan C. You're just a placeholder for the woman I really want to be. You're never. Yeah, that is what's happening there, isn't it? Never going to accept. What a sad, what a sad thing. How are you going to give everything to somebody who's telling you they just want to give you the bare minimum? How, how can you say you value yourself? Yeah, you have to. Yeah. 100%. I mean, there's really nothing else to say. Yeah, you have to respect yourself more. You can't. So that's why I say there's something internal that you have to assess. But you're right. It doesn't take away from the fact that that person is being shitty. Because at the end of the day, if you're that man or you're that woman who neglects someone at repeated different points and you never cut that thing off early, you just drag that shit off so you can siphon sex, attention, money, whatever. Yes, you're engaging in incredibly shitty behavior. Doesn't matter if you're upfront about it. Because yeah. I think it's a reprehensible behavior to sleep with somebody and not care about the fact that they're being emotionally damaged and hurt by what you're doing. How can you be with someone that often or go on <laughs> dates with them and not... You know, and there's a difference between being like, I'm never going to be the boyfriend that'll take pictures and post you and stuff versus being like, hey, listen, I'm just looking for something casual. You know, that's not something that I would do because like I'm not looking for a boy. You know, you have to be upfront about everything. And we don't know the specifics of it. You know, maybe he did say all that. Um... And she was just hopeful, you know, and women do be women do be gooses. Women do be silly gooses sometimes. Right. Um, but, yeah, there is a difference between like setting the firm boundary of like, yeah, this is like an open situation. You're casual. I'm not really looking for anything serious. So, like, I wouldn't post you because, like, you know, it's not what this is. And if you're not cool with it, whatever, um, you know, there's a difference between those two things. Hold on a second. Hey, babe, what's up? Hey, what are you doing? I'm on stream right now. All right, I'll talk to you when you get home, okay? Love you. Oh, okay, bye. Bye. Okay. Let's <laughs> just check my stream. Whatever, okay. I care about the fact that they're going home and they're crying later because they know you don't want them. Yeah, but I was... I wanted to keep it short so I wouldn't have to edit it out of the video. <laughs> I'm fucking lazy. Front, it don't matter. If you're up front and you say, I'm going to punch you in the face every night and give you black eyes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Damn. I mean, in, in, in his defense, how many times does it take for you to start listening? You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. That's terrible. And the girl accepts it. Does that make you any less of a shitty person? No. 
That's crazy. You brother. see her. She's going to the hospital. Yeah, that, you're, 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 yeah you got to pay for that hospital bill. You might as well hit a dog or something. Buy an animal and beat the shit out of that. You don't have to hit a person. That's crazy talk. All right, I'm just being silly. Okay, don't hit animals. All right. Given her brain contusions, Jesus she accepted Christ. it still. Doesn't matter. You have to be considered the people you're involved with. I think I read something else online that like really pissed me off. Someone was asking a question. Why does my boyfriend get so mad when I express my needs to him? One of the... Listen, that's just a whole conversation of like, how are you expressing it? And like, you know, yada. there's so many different aspects to that. There's, there's so many different qualifiers to like what that situation looks like. You know, who knows? Maybe you're expressing your needs to him and he feels like his needs uh, are, are being are falling on deaf ears because he's, I don't know, for whatever reason. Who knows? The comments I thought was so true was just like, it's because they don't really care about you. They want to be in a relationship. <clears throat> But they don't want to do what it takes to nurture the relationship and to have a healthy partnership with you. They that could be true. Like I said, there's so many different aspects to that. It's it's there's so many different aspects. You know, it's quite possible that they don't want to nurture you. It's also possible that you know um, they're doing st they you they feel like you're not caring about their needs and you know it could get it's a it's a whole that's a lot. They just want the benefits of a relationship. They hate the fact that they have... But she's obviously identifying with it, so... ...have to go out of their way to make you feel loved in order to reap the benefits of a relationship. They resent the fact that they can't just exist and be loved and be taken care of without doing anything for their partner. They resent the fact they have to be romantic. They just want to put in no effort and just, like, be accepted and loved as they are without giving me anything. They got pissed I had needs and that they couldn't just exist and treat me shittily, they got mad that like I didn't want to accept that and that I dared to ask more of them. Well, it sounds like you did accept it. <laughs> it sounds like you did accept it and then he broke up with you, but I guess because you kept venting that frustration, but like, yeah, okay. I, I mean, I, it's hard to feel too bad for her because it's like, yeah, I mean, like you dated a shitty guy man like that sucks and he said he was very clear about it and that makes him bad and it also makes you kind of weak in that scenario and you can get stronger you know so little information everyone reads into that comment that she saw yeah and yeah, then yeah. reads their own negative experiences with the absolute 100 percent. they they're they're they are um projecting themselves onto that experience and so there's a thousand holes that are uh, in what she said and you're filling the gaps with like what feels good to you right that's what a, that's basically horoscoping is oh i got my horoscope this month it says i will find lots of wealth and then this month you got 20 extra dollars oh my god or this month maybe you got a wealth of love oh my god and you can apply your own experiences to the situations that's how horoscopes work they're vague enough um, for you to apply your experience to it and that's that's what that is right so so for example she looked at it and through her experiences of being mistreated by men, she went to the extreme of like, well, that's because these men don't want to make any efforts to maintain a relationship. They just want to be in one. And then men are going to go from their perspective, like, oh, this lady just wants to constantly trauma dump and talk about emotions that are irrelevant or not really that important. Yeah, I get that sometimes. Like, I love my wife to death. Um, and there are times where I feel like, you know, sometimes she expresses things to me and it can be overwhelming for me. But, I, but we both do our best to be better. You know, and I, I try to do better to listen, especially now that she's on like hormone treatments to have my kid. So, you know, I got to you got to be better when you're, you're trying to have a kid. You know, women are going through a lot. Try to give you that baby hormone changes. They have to grow something in their body. You know, when a woman's trying to have your baby, like she truly does not have full agency or autonomy over her body in the same way a man does, because, you know, she's got another baby. She's got another person in there now. <clears throat> so I respect her a lot for that. But yeah, OK. And just make a, a, a mole out of an anthill or whatever it is. What is it? Shit, anthills are a fucking pain in the ass. But I got ants. I got to deal with that shit. It's a mountain. Of a mole, hold on. I don't know. Is it make an anthill out of a mole? No, you know, it's not. That's what you know. That's not what it is. Abbott. It's make a mountain out of a molehill. Stop. I don't know that expression, bro. I'm sorry about that. You're on your own on this one. Make a mountain out of a, a hill. Yeah. That's not a real thing, but it sounds like <laughs> don't matter. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so. It's just you could say make a mountain out of an anthill too, but ants ants are fucking annoying, bro. They're goddamn annoying. Good point. Yeah, that doesn't invalidate. Make it make it a bigger deal than what it is. Make Whatever. something out of something that's not a thing. Ants are coming up your booty. So, <laughs> Why that booty? Up, I didn't know they could come. I don't know. <laughs> so you guys understand? Because we're boys being boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always for the booty. Okay. So, um, so I, I just think it's interesting when people read because like. You don't know what the situation of that. Is. I know some women who 
They just dump everything they have in their thoughts and their minds all the time. And it's just not good. It's not good for your sometimes sure. Your partner, sometimes get to self-reflect before you bring it up. And then I know some guys as well who completely neglect their partners when they have emotional needs and never want to have any emotional conversation because it's too much emotional labor. Both yeah. sides and even with the person who might dump too much, they still need time to be able to be emotional, you know what I mean? Like working on yourself doesn't mean to stop dumping emotionally. It means to slow it down a little bit, right? So. Could be true. It's just interesting when people read a comment with zero information, they're like, I know what's happening. He's neglecting you. Like you see it on Reddit all the time. Some people will post a Reddit. I don't, I don't look at Reddit. A random Reddit story with very little information from one perspective and everyone in the comments like, he's gaslighting, he's a narcissist and he hates you. Uh, he's a bitch, blah, blah, blah. And they'll run with it. They have no information. Everybody's a fucking narcissist now. It's crazy. I feel like the people who call the people narcissists the most are legitimate narcissists themselves. It's like, Jesus Christ. Because they're why, all reflecting their own personal experience. That's why you don't talk shit about your significant others to others. Yeah. <clears throat> your, True. Your family, your friends. Well, I think you could have healthy venting pathways. I personally don't feel the need to vent myself to uh, any of my friends or family about my wife. There's just nothing that I feel the need to talk about I, that I can't talk about with my wife. There might be instances where she vents about something to somebody to me, but I trust that it's a minor thing. Um, like when I was talking to those kids. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God damn it. I shouldn't have made that fucking joke, but it was too funny. I said minor. And I have a dumb idiot brain. Yeah, but no, like, I mean, if she might complain about something small, like, uh, like I didn't cut, I haven't cut my toenails in a couple, like a month or two, but I did cut them today. She'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, wanted to hear the clacking on the floor. <laughs> But nothing big. But we also don't really have anything big that we have an issue with. I mean, my wife and I will have conversations with each other when something goes wrong. And we'll usually hash those out pretty quickly. So, like, maybe a few hours. Sometimes it takes a day. Um, you know? They don't but have... usually, like, when one of us gets really irritated, we won't talk for, like, an hour or two. And then we'll come back and we'll reconvene, you know? And part of the... We always sleep in the same bed together. Typically, you know? I don't... I don't remember the last time we didn't. You only have part of the information. Facts. You don't run that. You don't do that shit. But some space isn't necessarily a bad idea sometimes if you need it. Literally. But it's got to be productive space. You know what I mean? Like if you're trying to have like have space from your partner because you need time to just get through your shit, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to have space from your partner as a way to hurt them, that's wrong. Those are two different things. Those are not the same thing. Intentionality does matter. Okay. You're not supposed to try to hurt your partner when you're angry at them. You're supposed to try to have a productive, you know, uh, relationship with that anger. Really, nobody comes online and says, I f***ed up in a relationship. Everyone always says, my partner's treated me poorly. Mm, well, then... No. I feel like it's not a matter of... Yeah, I've been treated poorly in relationships, and I've also treated people poorly, and they were the same relationships. You know what I mean? Like, you're not the best... I was... You know, you're not the best version of yourself. It's an unfortunate reality. Oh, he likes <laughs> more. I feel like it's more of, like, he realized that I was asking for basic things. And so in his next relationship, he decided maybe I should become a better partner in the future because maybe I wasn't a good partner in the past. Instead of uh, or maybe he just didn't really find you to be worth the effort. Changing for me instead of becoming a better partner for me, they chose to break up with me. They couldn't like let go of their ego. If they ch it's so interesting because like that, this doesn't sound like somebody who believes in the concept of there is one. I know it sounds silly, but then maybe that's a cope for me. But I don't think that there was ever another person for me than my wife. So when you say like, oh, he didn't want to change for me. What you're telling me is that like, you don't believe that there is, I don't know. I believe that there's only one person for me, at least. I don't know about everybody else. And uh, to me, it sounds like, you know, this person wasn't your person. But you're like, no, they could have been if they just, but they didn't want to. Because you, they didn't find you worth it because you guys are just incongruent change for me they're giving me too much power so they'll change in the next relationship as a way to save face they'll i think that she's just taking this too personally take that feedback and move to the next relationship it she's whinging now pisses me off and it makes me want to die alone i feel like this is all so jaded but like this is just how i really feel about these men and i hate them <laughs> that's funny what a what an interesting experience i feel like women will hate men and men will hate women because they have bad relationship experiences you know and i hate myself for ever liking them and ever even having experienced this i like almost hate myself for like putting myself in this position even though i didn't know they were like this in the beginning well at least she's acknowledging her faults and again, uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like maybe you did know in the beginning, but who am I to say? <clears throat> they act so great in the beginning, you only see the true colors like four months later. How could I ever anticipate that? Like, I could Four months? No, I don't, I don't believe what she's saying. 
if he wasn't posting you on Instagram, he wasn't doing it from the start. It didn't take four months for you to learn that. You just put up with it for a long time. There's no way. That's a little bit, that's a little silly to me. It feels like I blame myself for being treated poorly. And on top of that, these men are blaming me for them treating me poorly. So it's like the whole thing just feels uh, now like she's, my- Now she's whining too much. My fault. It's not all your fault, but it's partially your fault. It's like when they end things with me, they always like- say all this like how long is her fucking video jesus christ bullshit that's just like oh like i think the world of you you've changed me so much i think the world of you you've taught me so many things there's so many things i admire about you i think you're an amazing person they always say stupid shit like that like that i don't even know if they mean but it's i almost wish you just sent me the, her video so i could just react to her video instead things because they, they say that and yet they treat me so poorly how can you even mean what you say when your actions are saying something completely <coughs> different how can you say that you care for me when you yeah i kind of understand why he didn't want to post her on social media now she's annoying as fuck if i'm being <laughs> I'm sorry, but holy fuck, you know what I mean? Like, but here, here's part of the thing, is that, like, if she was acting like this in private, it's not an issue. And, you know, you want to express your 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 frustrations and your relationships on social media, like, whatever, fine, do it. But you're like, I don't know, you're crying on social media about this? It's just... I don't know, man. It's like, shut up. You know, complain to your mom, and then, like, have a productive conversation on the internet, or just don't. Like, why are you using the internet as your fucking diary? You're looking for a bunch of other people like-minded that, you know, treat their all their problems as if they're a victim as well, and I just don't particularly care for that or respect that, so. You clearly do not care for me at all. Be fucking for real here. Like, be for real. Like, be honest. For real, Admit friends. Admit that you don't care about me don't say that you think all these positive things about me and maybe he thought you were cool maybe he actually liked you you just weren't for him maybe i don't know and a part of the reason he may not have liked you i hate to say it might have been because you're a pushover <laughs> you know and and i hate to say it but you know if if you don't set boundaries with a guy the guy's not going to respect you and so it sounds like you didn't set the boundaries with this guy, and then he didn't respect you. And yet decide that I'm not good enough, or like that I'm not what you want. Like, don't, don't do this like weird gaslighty like back and forth thing. Just be straight. She said her therapist told her to post this. Her therapist is her her therapist is an idiot. Then her therapist must be a young person, or either a young person, or maybe even an old person doesn't understand. Uh, the concept of setting positive boundaries with your social media life. You should not have posted this. This is not a positive boundary. Like crying is okay. It is okay to cry. You know, I have cried before. Okay. When I was gay. No, I'm just kidding. I've cried before. My wife cries. But how you cry and when you cry, very important. You don't need to cry on the internet. And you should try not to prime yourself and put yourself into a situation where you will cry on the internet. Uh, if it happens, it happens. But, like, I don't think you needed to post this. You know what I mean? I, I don't see this as a productive cry. It's not like you're posting about how much you loved your dad or your mom or something or, or how somebody had, like, a really good impact on you. You're 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 whinging about, you know, <laughs> you're fucking complaining about, uh, you know, an, an ex-boyfriend who was very explicit about how he didn't want to treat you like a girlfriend. You still stayed with him. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. <laughs> Because to me, if I really the thought the world of somebody, even if they weren't a romantic match for me, I would never treat them so disrespectfully. You should, I mean, at this point, set a better boundary, I don't know what to tell you. Especially on their birthday. And I would never the blame birthday. my bad behavior okay. on them. I would take accountability. I would be like, you know what? Uh, I did. I, I, I don't believe that because you weren't strong enough to break up with this guy when he said that he wasn't going to post you on social media. I doubt that you would have been strong enough for that. And I hate to be an asshole. I'm just but like to be real. Treat you right in the end. It was a lot. She, she, was, she, was, she was going in raw. <laughs> no diddy. I would suggest no diddy. Well, this may be counseling because if you why are you laughing? <laughs> he's not. He's saying he's gonna say the same thing I just said, but nicer. Yeah, if you you suggest counseling, maybe talk to somebody instead of the computer, instead of the internet, rather, like instead of TikTok. Because if you come out of there saying that you hate yourself and you hate these men and you hate yourself for allowing this, even though you and and. <clears throat> I would suggest counseling. The reason why I'm saying this is because you're gonna go into the relationship 
with that luggage. Yeah, with that baggage, and you're gonna have like an issue with your partner. Yeah, sure. That baggage is in the. My, I say it more than anything else because you're fucking crying about it on the on the internet. And back, it's in the trunk, and it starts to smell hot summer day, and it's gonna come out in your relationship. Yeah. <laughs> These fucking analogies are wild. Yeah. No, no, no. All right, that's it for today's video. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, incredible stuff. Beautiful.